I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Mark Crawford, who just scored his first Emmy nomination for composing the music to the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. Uh, first thing I want to ask is, um, you know, a lot of times in scoring, I find that sometimes uh, composers will find themselves relying on specific instruments in order to convey certain tones or themes. Uh, and I was wondering if you found yourself uh, relying on the relying on specific instruments to convey the certain tones or themes of the documentary through the music. Yeah, um, I think at the beginning, at the very beginning of the process, I uh, was definitely attracted to the synthesizer type of instruments. Um, I had, hadn't really worked with any synthesizers, uh, like actual physical synthesizers until this project. Um, so I could, um, it was just about like getting the, the most vintage synthesizers I could get um, in my room and just experiment all over the place. Um, but the other thing I was really interested in is the human aspect uh, and trying to contrast the synthesizer sound with more acoustic instruments. Um, so it was, uh, you know, balancing that uh, orchestral sound um, and finding uh, that cinematic balance uh, that, uh, and I really, really like the, um, like music or I like instrumentation where you can actually feel the humans in the room. And that's kind of what I was going for with even the strings that I, that I chose is you can kind of feel that there's, there's breaths and there's people there. Uh, whereas towards the uh, uh, latter end of the, the film, as the synthesizers start to take over, that uh, that humanity that's usually put into the music at the beginning starts to fade away, and it becomes a little bit more dystopian. So uh, what was your favorite aspect of putting together the score for this documentary? Because it is quite an incredible score. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I think my favorite part was, you know, working with some of those vintage synths at the very beginning of the process, working with a, I think it was a surge modular synthesizer, which basically just, it's a crude synthesizer that has a bunch of wires and knobs and just being, you know, I, I don't usually get tactile with music and it's it's more just like playing around and uh, punching in numbers and, and just seeing what sounds cool. And I was really trying to find that sound of like, emitting the beast from this uh, weird electronic uh, instrument. Um, that was just super fun. You know, so some of the tracks of the soundtrack have this eerie, like rumbling tone right at the beginning. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of tracks like, you know, A Call to Arms, uh, Hooked in the Classroom, and definitely the undertone of Checkmate Humanity. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could explain how you, how you get that kind of sound in your compositions. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of a sound that I, I felt like should be a, a, a through line throughout the film where it's like this underlying current of uh, audio that just kind of at certain points in the film, it really harmonizes with the music. And then uh, as the film progresses, as Ben takes his trip down the rabbit hole and as uh, his digital doppelganger starts to take form, that kind of uh, sound and that that um, that modular synth drone starts to deharmonize against the music and it just kind of subconsciously makes the audience feel a bit uneasy i love that uh, gradual progression as the film progresses did you find your uh, one of the most distinctive things about the documentary is the fact that it has that parallel narrative along with your traditional documentary type thing a uh, type of uh, uh structure it has the parallel dramatic narrative of the family and seeing how social media takes over their lives. Um, did you find yourself taking a different approach to composing the sections that refer the dramatic narrative as opposed to the regular documentary structure narrative? Yeah, um, I think that was a big question at the beginning of the process was, you know, what sound, uh, you know, would there to be two different types of scores in this film where there's the, the documentary side um, versus the narrative side? And I think what we came across was you know, honing in on that dilemma aspect where um, kind of each there's like the, the narrative world versus the documentary world, the humans versus computers, all these kind of pairings that I, I felt were were right for a musical idea. Um, and so at the beginning, when it seems like the world is totally normal and you're, we're introducing the family, everything is very acoustic and it feels more uh, traditional cinematic uh, orchestration. But then as the film progresses, it, it's like the music starts to break down 
and the computers start to take over almost as if they're taking the pilot seat for the for the latter half of the film and scoring it so was there any particular part of the movie that you found it challenging to get the right musical tone for yeah i mean actually i i think the very first uh song that i started on uh one of the first pieces you know i was still trying to figure out the the tone and um you know i i, had, I was kind of i had the temp love kind of in my brain where you're, you're hearing the temp music and trying to go something that sounds like that. And so we, we kept on trying to work on it and, tr and working on it. And Jeff uh, and Davis, the editor, kept giving me feedback of, you know, this, this isn't quite working. Um, so I kind of left that until the very, very end of the film when I had kind of put my own uh, signature sound into the film. And I reapproached that um, and, uh, you know, kind of made it mine uh, towards the end. So, um, you know, the film goes, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, seeing this film and, um, you know, uh, trying to, you know, get, uh, trying to get a sense of the film uh, when it doesn't have a presence on social media. And um, I've talked with a couple of people who have said that uh, they have stopped using uh, social media. A lot of social media uh, has your uh, consumption of social media um, been impacted uh, uh, since you watched uh, the film? Yeah, um, I think when I first started working on the film, uh, you know, I was ready to throw my phone out the window. I actually just like totally cut it out of my my diet. Uh, it was like feeling like I was eating junk food for the last 10 years and totally cut it out. Um, and then, uh, you know, later down the road, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's just basically changing how uh, I approach it uh, now. I think one of the, um, especially as a musician uh, who's looking for creativity. Uh, one of the interview subjects that didn't quite make it into the film, I remember what she said was, um, you know, we've lost a sense of boredom in our life where we have these digital pacifiers kind of with us, uh, distracting us and pulling our attention away all the time. Um, and I think as a musician, having boredom is really nice uh, because you have these uh, times where you get more creative. You know, where's, where's the one place that you don't have your phone? It's in the shower. It's in the bathtub, and that's where I, I get my most creative ideas. So uh, I mentioned uh, previously that you this is that you scored your first uh, career Emmy nomination uh, for this uh, score, and I was wondering, you know, what was it like learning that you that uh, you had achieved that? Yeah, um, definitely very very surreal. Um, I'm just super proud of this whole team um you know because i was I, I came on board as a sound recordist originally so i i met kind of all the people that were uh working on the film and all the camera operators uh, i've known jeff for a long time and uh, i just know how authentic he is and how um true to the subject he, uh, he is when he approaches a, a film um so it's uh it's really cool to to see that rewarded I, uh, so you say you started as a sound recordist on the film before you, you uh, be, uh, trans transitioned to the role of composer. How did that uh, how did that role transition come about? Was it, was it, were you always intended to be the composer, or was that something that came came about later? Yeah, uh, at the beginning, I had no expectations that, that I would become the composer. Um, I had started right, recording some of these interviews from the very beginning, and as I'd record them, I just kind of started thinking about, you know, what type of music this movie might have uh, based on the concept that these experts were talking about. Um, and so I just kind of go back and on my free time, sketch out these musical ideas, thinking about, you know, digital versus humans, um, and just, you know, had fun just, just to write and just to write music. Uh, and I sent these sketches on to Davis, uh, the editor, just you know, kind of getting his opinion and seeing if he might be able to try these out uh, as the, you know, he was working on the film. Uh, and then Jeff would watch certain cuts uh, of, of certain scenes with my music in it, uh, you know, and against some of the temp music that was already in there. And uh, he'd kind of stop and say, who, who did this uh, piece? And uh, it always kind of came back to me. And so that was like where the first initial discussions happened. Well, um, 
uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best at the upcoming Creative Arts uh, ceremonies next month. And to all of our viewers, please uh, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top people in Hollywood. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks, Charlie.